third topic is the exodus from Egypt. I told you that uh, they spent 400 years uh, in Egypt. Once Joseph goes into Egypt because they had the famine, the hungry, hunger in the land. So to, to, to survive, they go from uh, Palestine to Egypt. And then they settle down in Egypt because uh, they had a uh, uh, good land, very, very fertile land that produces a lot compared to the, the land they lived. Palestine is more, uh, more of a, uh, a desert, arid, uh, dry land, more wilderness. So they cannot practice a lot, uh, and uh, they were always hungry for food. But in Egypt, uh, the, the land they were given uh, by the king at the time, the Pharaoh, the king, gave them the good land in the, in the land of Goshen. Goshen is uh, 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 the name of a place that the Jews settled. So Joseph and then uh, his descendants, that their children and children's children lived there for 400 years. And then, I mean, within 400 years, the kings change. And as the kings change, these kings forget the history of, I mean, who, who's going to remember like 100 years ago uh, the things happened? I mean, with the, with the modern, even with the modern media and everything, we don't, we don't really remember the things uh, that happened 100 years ago. So the people forget why these Jews are living in Egypt. And Egyptians, I mean, it's the same today, that the, 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 the racial division and racial discrimination is still uh, with us. And in, and in the ancient days, it was more severe. So, that the people did not like other kind of people. Egyptians did not like the Jews. Jews did not like the Egyptians, even though they lived there for like 400 years. So eventually, when the kings change, they forget. I mean, the generation changes, and they forget about the history. And now, the Jews become the slaves uh, to the Egyptian people. Egyptians, are, they, they have more power, a lot more people. So, eventually, the Jews, they decide to leave because of uh, all these pressures and, uh, and the, uh, the, the discrimination against them. And that's uh, Exodus, called the Exodus. So, uh, the Genesis contains that story. And the formation of Israel as a nation. I told you that Israel was never a nation. It was a tribal. Uh, but when they were coming out of uh, Egypt, they had uh, one million people. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, a lot of people. So, that, can, that is more than a tribe. And then eventually they developed into a nation and that story is there. And then also decline and fall of nation. I told you that the, uh, it started as a kingdom. Now they have a government. They have a king. And then this nation goes on, on to uh, several kings and eventually divide into two countries, north and south, and uh, Israel and Judah. So these two, they become two countries with the two kings on both sides. I mean, uh, just like a, uh, we, we have North Korea and South Korea. It's the same thing. So they divided. Then eventually, uh, these two kingdoms were destroyed by, uh, by Babylon and Assyria. Uh, Babylon and Assyria, Assyria are the two world powers at the time. They, they were strong. They, they have uh, power and uh, strong uh, militant. So they, they invade uh, Israel and Judah and destroy them. 
that no longer they have nation. So they lose their, their nation, and then, because of that, another 400 years, they have no nation, but just the people. Uh, and that's the time of diaspora, or exile, or captivity, or the slave. So they become slaves to another uh, country for 400 years until they come back. And so, and then prophets uh, who spoke for God and uh, wisdom books. Yeah. So they're, they're like a poetry, prophets, and wisdom books in the Old Testament as well. So mainly, the, the Old Testament books, half of it is a history, and half of it is a poetry, and the wisdom books, and the prophecy. And uh, uh, probably 30% 30, 30 of the uh, Old Testament has to do with the prophecy. Because, like uh, we, we just looked at, it deals with the uh, coming of the Messiah. Uh, this topic, the Messiah is coming. Even though we are suffering like this, even though we are uh, captured and uh, slaves to another country, the Messiah will come. When he comes, they will be free. We will come back to uh, Jerusalem. We will come back to the land of Palestine, Israel. <coughs> and we are going to uh, build a nation that's going to last forever. So that's uh, the, the dream. And then that's the idea. And it's called... Zionism or Zionism, uh, whatever you pronounce, pre prefer, means that the, the, they are coming back to the city of Zion. Zion is a nation, a city, a state. So they are dreaming Zion, and then this uh, to Zion to happen, you have to have Messiah, the, 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 the powerful king, the king of all kings. So that's basically the idea. The Old Testament says this, this Messiah is going to come and it's going to free us. Because they are all scattered. One thing, they are all scattered. And then secondly, they don't have uh, the nation uh, or land. They lost everything. They don't have government. And it happens because of their own iniquity. God punishes them because they did not listen to God. They did not obey God. They, they did not worship God anymore. They worship something else. And then they are punished. And they are scattered. They become slaves to other nations. But they, there is a hope. When, once they, they repent, so this is another key word. Repent means they realize they have done wrong, they've sinned, they sinned against God, and they confess, they realize that, and then they ask for the forgiveness. That's a repentance. So when they repent, they know they have chance to come back as a nation. And then the nation is the Zion. So Zion is their dream, their hope, uh, their, their, their eternal state. Once that Zion is complete or come to, uh, to their present, their, their, their reality, uh, they're going to stay as a nation forever. So we individually as a person dream a similar thing. Uh, you're in, it, the, it might not be the name Zion or Zionism, but you hope 
as a person, as a human being, why can't I live forever? Why can't we, uh, I be happy? Why can't I be in peace? Why do I have all this trouble, all this sickness, and then eventually we die? So how can we avoid this death and uh, live eternally? Why, uh, how can we avoid this sorrow and sadness and live happy forever? Why we hate one another? Why there is so, so much uh, killing and uh, so much hate, hatred and uh, so much divorce and all these things? So the, we have the same questions, not as a nation, but as an individual. We pray and hope that we will live happily forever. We will be joyful. We will we'll love one another uh, forever. And so that's, that's kind of dream. So we'll stay as a family forever, loving family forever. So that, that's kind of a hope and dream that every individual have. I mean, anyone with the right mind will, uh, you know, dream that. So that's a, uh, our Zionism. Everyone dreams of that, and uh, everyone has that uh, state of Zion or uh, or utopia, in other words. Utopia is a Greek, uh, Greek idea of Zion, and uh, every culture uh, has one of these, and then every religion uh, has uh, this. So Buddhism uh, has is, is a heaven, uh, and uh, In Japan, we have a Shintoism. Shintoism has a, also its, its own version of uh, Zion, the heaven. So any, any culture, uh, they do have uh, this idea. So it's, uh, it's universal, it's common to human generation. And in, in the Jewish culture, in the, in the Bible, it's, it's Zion. And this Zion is translated as In the New Testament, in, uh, in Christian uh, concept, that Zion is a kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven. So heaven and the kingdom of God is the same thing. So in Christian uh, concept, the heaven, the eternal heaven, uh, the eternal kingdom, that is same as uh, Zion in the Old Testament. So Zion is translated as a kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. So Christians believe when we die as a Christian, as a child of God, then we are going to be transferred into heaven uh, because of Jesus Christ. So that idea of coming Jesus Christ is very key uh, to Christian faith. So these are again the contents of the uh, Old Testament, some of the major contents of the Old Testament. Now, the history. The purpose, the reason the Bible contains the history is so we can look back how God dealt with his people. That's the one thing. And two, number two, because of that history, we know how God is going to deal with us today. So that's the second uh, purpose of our writing history. Number three, we know how God is going to deal with us in the future. So looking, looking back in the history, we, we know that the pattern and the ways and the reasons uh, uh, of how God is dealing with his people in the Old Testament, which happens to be the Jewish people. 
And then that as an example of a history. We, we learn about the patterns and the examples and the principles of how God deals with his people in the past, before Christ. Then, we also learn, because of the, the history, how he is going to deal with his people today. Us as believers, Christians, we know that the pattern and principle, the ways that God uh, dealt with uh, his people in the Old Testament also applies applies to us today. And we know that same principle, same the, the method, uh, the, the patterns that is going to happen in the future. So we know exactly how God wants to live with us. It's like a manual. It's like a, a, the textbook uh, for us to understand the ways God brings his people, how he, he uh, you know, uh, listens to his people, how he answers to his people, how he uh, judges his people, how he saves his people. These things that are in the Old Testament, the history. So the history is important for Christians and the, all the believers. Because as we read the history, we understand God better. As we read the history in the Old Testament, we know the nature of and the characteristic of God. So the history, through the history, you understand. That's the same thing as uh, when, when you are dating someone, you want to listen to uh, that, that person's history and uh, the detail of the story, how he or she grew up, in what kind of family, and then what happened, the, the events and episodes that happened in that person's uh, life. Once you know that uh, the, the details of that, uh, that person's uh, story, then you understand that person much better. And that, that's a, one basic thing that you do when you're dating someone, right? So, I mean, if you're trying to marry that person, you got to know uh, about that person. And nothing better than listen, listening to uh, his or her stories in detail. And you know the patterns and the reasons, the ways that uh, this person behaves. And uh, uh, not only that, you know what that person's value is, why he or she does certain things. So that kind of makes sense once you hear the story of the, another person. If you're a family, you know, you know, you, you know how uh, your family grew up and uh, you have, I mean, detailed experience. So family don't, don't need to, you know, tell you about the story. Uh, but you want to know about your uh, parents' uh, uh, story, history. And that helps you to, uh, to understand them much better. So that history is important for a person and if it's important for uh, uh, religion and it's important for a nation. As you know your nation's history, you much better understand who you are uh, as, a, as a citizen of that nation. So same thing. So the purpose of a, a history is to let you come closer to God, understand Him better. So Old Testament has all these uh, stories and uh, we love to read that history, not because it's fun and interesting, but because it is going to help you to understand who God is. And it kind of gives the structure. there's a certain pattern, a certain structure in that story. Uh, one structure that you'll find is as a history, 
in, in the Old Testament, I mean, in the Bible, the history says there was a beginning, and there is going to be... It's not going to go forever. So it's like a segment, and it's a, it's a certain... Uh, with the beginning and uh, end. And it's already decided. It's already planned. Uh, and uh, God is not going to change that end. So the, there is a one pattern. Structure. Beginning and the end. In the New Testament it says Alpha and Omega. Uh, Alpha is the first letter of a Greek uh, uh, the, the, the uh, Greek letters. And uh, omega is the last word of a Greek letters. So first uh, letter and last word. The letter means the beginning and, and alpha and omega. So that's one pattern in uh, the structure in history. So there's a beginning of a history and there's going to be the uh, end of history. Number two. So the Bible says there are going to be six uh, six and actually seven different ups and downs in history. So in Genesis, as you read the Genesis at the beginning, the first chapter says God created this, and there comes evening and the morning. And then the next day, God creates certain things, and then comes evening and the morning. That repeats for six days. And then seventh day, uh, he take a rest from all the works that he has done. So that there is a pattern of evening, actually it starts as a, as a starts as an evening. And then goes into morning. And re it repeats uh, itself. So down, up, down, up, down, up. And uh, history goes on. So this is a pattern in the Christian understanding or Jewish understanding of history. The time of darkness and time of light. Time of darkness and time of light. And there is a war going on between a godly force and evil force. And the godly force wins. And then, again, the evil force wins for a certain time. Then godly force wins again. And this pattern is, all, it is embedded in a as you read the, I mean, watch the Hollywood movies, many uh, Hollywood movies are made in, within this pattern. So even though uh, many Hollywood artists are not Christians, the culture, the Western culture, the American culture has uh, this biblical idea about the time and the good and evil and all these things. So this pattern, this structure is embedded is, is it, with, with their DNA. Uh, so that's a cultural DNA. And uh, in, in our culture, I mean, in, in the Asian culture, we do not have this kind of patterns uh, uh, built in to our DNA. We have different ones. Uh, many of us believe in this circular and then uh, um, and, um and yang. So that, that's kind of a built-in DNA for understanding history and time. Uh, it's different uh, from this Western uh, idea. It's not uh, actually Western, it's a Christian. So uh, there is this I mean, built-in understanding about the time and history. But these people, I mean, the Christians, Jews, and uh, Muslims, uh, they understand uh, the history this way. Third pattern. That's 
the third pattern. Same, pretty much similar things happening throughout the time. It repeats itself. So the third pattern is <coughs> repetition. Repetition meaning the same thing happening over and over again. Very similar things happening in history. So there's a repetition. So these are three elements, the structures in understanding history in the Old Testament. So Old, Old Testament kind of gives how to interpret your life. See, when, when we, it, it, it makes sense. You, as an individual, us, as a human being, there's a certain beginning. And there's going to be end. And that end is not really end. It's another beginning, right? So when we, we are born and we live and we die. So birth is the beginning and then death, physical death, is end. It's a beginning and end with a linear uh, line drawn from the beginning to the end. That's our personal uh, life. Also, we experience ups and downs, ups and downs. Uh, you, I mean, for Christians, uh, believers, these ups and downs come as we relate to God. But as a non-believer, non-Christian, still, you have ups and downs. And there's a pattern. There's a reason, certain reason that you kind of go up, and then there's a reason kind of makes you go down. And then, again, the, probably the same thing makes you go up and makes you go down. For example, if you are a lazy person, kind of lazy person, because of your laziness, you may go down in your life. And once you kind of decide not to be lazy any longer and be diligent and work hard, then you kind of go up. Then once you go up, again, your laziness kind of kick in again. Because of that laziness, and you go down again. So there is a certain pattern. Uh, so uh, as an individual, as a person, there are ups and downs and ups and downs. Uh, see? Yeah. That's, a, that's a how you're going to interpret your life. Uh, even though you're not a believer, it still doesn't matter. Uh, there's going to be ups and downs, and there's, there are reasons, there is a reason, or there are reasons why you go up and you do, you go down in your life. And also, third thing, repetition. For some reason, somehow, your life kind of repeats itself. Same thing happens over and over again. Uh, if you, I mean, as you live longer, you are going to be certain that your life repeats itself, that there is a certain pattern repeating. So not only is a, a, the history pattern in the Old Testament, it makes sense in your life. It, it's better than this, this diagram of Ng and Yang and just uh, making circles around without an end. Uh, that's uh, the that's, uh, Asian culture. I mean, uh, many of us who were born and uh, uh, lived in, in Asia, we, we understand this, uh, even though you are not really, uh, you know, uh, taught uh, to learn this, but it is in culture. And this, this, you know, there's no end in repeats, and there's no way that you can get out of, of this. Uh, so that's another kind of understanding of history. And then there is. His story. It's, it's not uh, my story. The Christians say, I mean, as Christians believe, it's not my story, it's his story. Once you become a Christian, uh, you're not in control of your life. And you get the, the, the help and the learning and the directions from God. And it becomes not your story, but it, it becomes his story. 
So that's why the word history is there. Uh, it's not my story, our story, but it's rather his uh, story. So that's how the, the, the Old Testament and the Bible understand uh, the history. In the book history, there are these books. These are the books uh, that are considered uh, in the history. The, the Pentateuch is the first five books, and then there's going to be Exodus, uh, which is a very key uh, you know, event uh, in the Old Testament history, Exodus, and then Judges and Kings and the, the age of diaspora, uh, they, they're uh, becoming slaves to other nations. Then there are uh, the age of prophets. So these these are the uh, basically basically the Old Testament history and the major uh, events or the themes in the history of Old Testament. Then we have the laws. In the Old Testament, there are the history and the laws. Laws are given. These laws. There there's Two kinds of laws, uh, that one written and one oral. Uh, once it becomes a written uh, law, all the cultures, most, I mean, I could say, safely say, all the cultures had the oral law. Uh, they do have this concept about the law, what to do and what not to do. Whether it's a, it's a family, or whether it's a tribe, or whether it's a nation, it doesn't matter. Every human human society community must have that law to sustain. Because not because law is good. Law is never good. I mean, you you it's better with uh, to to live without law. But because of our human uh, weakness, uh, human evil. Because we have an evil inside, uh, there has to be a certain way to control and uh, suppress that evil coming out. If you don't do that, everyone's gonna, uh, you know, uh, take from everyone else. Uh, the powerful, uh, powerful person wins. So in the ancient culture, I mean, before they had the law or any ethics, the the one who has the most power, uh, he usually it's a he, right? He is going to be the uh, the the ruler, and uh, he's gonna he is the uh, the top guy. And the uh, people realize without the law, without the certain lines, uh, people gonna live just like a uh, animal. So that's the the purpose of the law. The law says you shouldn't do this, and you should do this, so we can survive. Uh, as a people together. So without the law, I mean, you're not, going to, not everyone's going to survive. Uh, there are few who is going to survive because he or she is uh, stronger uh, or smarter uh, or has more land or has more money. So, but sadly, uh, today, even though we have many, many laws, uh, the, the the one who has most money is the, usually the most powerful. Uh, that's probably why uh, Trump uh, became a president uh, of the United States. Uh, so the powerful, I mean, the, the powerful and the uh, rich wins. So, but without the law, it's going to be much, much worse. So the law is there. And in the Old Testament, the law is there to say how you should relate with God. And not only it's for the people, but it, it is for uh, you to worship God. So the law tells you how to worship God and, and why you worship God. So the law for Israel and the Old Testament is important for, as, as a people community but it is important as a religious uh, people. 
so the Lord tells you, because, because of God, you should not do this, and you should do this. And the Ten Commandment is a typical uh, example of the law. And not only there are Ten command, Commandments, there are 690-some detailed uh, instructions on how, to, how you should live as a Jew. So it controls your worship, your community, your marriage, and the uh, way you deal, uh, I mean, make a deal, so the be, uh, way you do the business, and how you deal with your, your uh, sickness and uh, illness, that covers. And then it covers about uh, your government, and uh, all these things are written, uh, and uh, you should follow the law, that law, as a, as a uh, Jewish people, as an Israelite. So that those things are given. So that's the purpose of the law, and uh, there is a written and oral uh, law. <coughs> and there are some other books in the in the Bible. Uh, there is a topic of the wisdom. The wisdom books are like, more like a philosophy uh, of Jewish people. And then they, they think a certain way. They value certain things. And it is written as uh, wisdom literature, so-called wisdom literature. It's, it, it contains that philosophy and the values and ethics and all those things. And three examples are Proverbs, as a, as a good example of wisdom literature, and Ecclesiastes. Uh, it's, it's about the, uh, you know, people as a, as a religious people. So those are the uh, wisdom and also poetry, Psalm and Song of Solomon and Lamentation. Uh, these are the uh, I'll explain uh, further uh, as we continue but the poetry and then prophecy. There are many prophecies in the Bible. So basically, there's a history, the law, the wisdom, and then poetry and prophecy. These are five typical uh, main uh, categories of books in the Bible. That's, and and that's, that's how the Old Testament is arranged. Uh, so it begins with the history and uh, the book, Old Testament, and ends with the prophecy. So history to prophecy, that's the main content of the Bible, Old Testament. So that's pretty much uh, the, the introduction uh, to Old Testament, and we will go uh, a book by book, uh, uh, briefly. I mean, I'm not going to uh, tell everything about each book. There are 39 books, and uh, probably we're going to uh, look at uh, those important books. And uh, let's take a break. And please come back at 11 or 5. Okay? Let's go over the questions together and uh, try to make sure that you have right answers. Because uh, this will be the also appear in the final exam, just like uh, we did uh, uh, before. Uh, if you are a first time uh, a student in my class, you know, again, this, just keep it. Uh, and uh, the questions at the, on, the, on the final exam are just from this. And it's going to be exactly the same question. So first quiz is basically true or false questions about the Bible. And uh, even though you may not be a Christian, uh, still uh, it's you know, good to have some knowledge about the Bible as a book. The most uh, commonly read uh, book uh, among the human generation. Question number one: The name Bible came from the Greek word uh, "biblia," which means a book. So the answer is yes, true, 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 true. correct, and true. Number two: Some written form. Of Thank 
Question number two. Some written form of the Bible came from so-called the oral tradition, meaning it's uh, transferred from generation to generation by stories. And the answer is true. Number three. Bible has many authors, but believed to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's how the Christians believe uh, to be, so it's true. Mm -hmm. Question number four. Bible has 27 Old Testament books and 39 New Testament books. False. Uh, yeah, it's false. It's the other way around. The 39 Old Testament books and 27 New Testament books. So number four question answer is false. Number five. Bible is written over a span of 3,000 years or more. Uh, answer is what? true. Uh -huh. uh, true? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because okay. uh, <laughs> they think the uh, uh, Book of Job is written 2000, uh, 3000 BC. So, uh, it's true. True. Mm -hmm. Number six. Bible is reported as the most sold books in the history. Yeah, it, it, it has a Guinness record. Yeah, true. Number seven, Bible is translated false. only into okay. Greek and English. Mm, and that's false. false. And it's uh, translated into 6,000, 8,000 languages. Uh, number eight, books in the Bible have all the original copies remaining and non, we have no, no remaining copies. That's false. Of course. Uh -huh. So we, we don't find any original copies yet. I don't think there is any uh, existing. Number nine, uh, Jews, Muslims, and Christians share a large portion of Old Testament. Yes, probably 80-90% 80, 80, of all the Old Testament are the uh, same. So true. And question number 10, it is difficult to consider Bible as one coherent book uh, as false. Yeah. It's as, as considered as one coherent book because it you know, talks about the same thing, the same topic with the same thing. Okay. Any questions? Okay, good. Just continue to focus, and uh, the, this uh, quiz, you may not have answers in your textbook, and uh, so try to focus on those uh, PowerPoints, and these, these are the where the, this quiz coming from. And, uh, All right, uh, for those new students who just came in, like uh, for today, okay, let me explain about the syllabus briefly. Uh, you can just look at the grade, uh, that's how I, I'm going to grade, and there are two recommended books at the end. Uh, you, you don't have to read it, but I prefer you to read it, if you can. Uh, the main thing is the expectation. Uh, those who are for, 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 uh, first time in this class, uh, your attendance, that counts five grade points each. And uh, you're, you need to complete a review quiz, which you took today, and uh, there's going to be seven more until the final. And there are going to be two written reports on the topic of your choice. And the first topic is regarding the events written in the Bible, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, there are going to be events. And it's listed in your textbook. So choose one of those topics and write two page, uh, double space, letter size 10. Uh, you can also do the handwriting, that's fine, and uh, it should be two pages. And then another topic is on the uh, topic of worldview, Christian worldview. That's also listed in your textbook. So make a choice, 
and uh, I'm gonna ask you uh, which topics gonna you're gonna write uh, next week. So think about it and come with your decision. And uh, you need to report. I'm going to write on this topic. So I'll have uh, some, uh, uh, you know, pre knowledge about what you're going to do. So there are two page uh, reports, and then the final exam uh, counts as ten points. So all together, uh, you have basically four points for everyone. And uh, I mean, e even if you miss everything, you don't do nothing, you're gonna get four points. But other points you have to earn. And so all together, hundred points total. And there, are, there were some students uh, last uh, quarter who made a hundred points. Right. And uh, most of you guys made an A. And so I, I hope and I wish that you will make an A on this class. It's not that difficult. And you don't have to memorize anything. Just learn and you know, write down what you know. Okay. Let's continue with the, our topic of Old Testament books. Now we are covering, actually covering Old Testament books. And I'm trying, I'll try to go uh, each book uh, briefly, and there are 39 books, uh, but I'm not going to uh, talk about all 39 books, but probably uh, 25 books or so, uh, those important books. Pentateuch, that means five books, five, first five books in the Bible. Uh, those, are, those are thick, I mean, uh, stories after stories. And uh, these begin with the Genesis. Genesis I asked, I mean, I asked you to read the list of first three chapters of Genesis in your own language, whatever uh, you prefer, whether it's English or Chinese, Japanese. Uh, they are available, I mean, I think it's available in most of your languages. And uh, I'm sure that you're speaking those major languages. So uh, it is there, and uh, try to read it please first three chapters of Genesis, uh, even if you don't read any, any part of the Bible. And uh, it writes about these things. Genesis, uh, it speaks of a beginning and is fundamental to the understanding of the rest of the Bible. See, without uh, having the knowledge of Genesis, uh, the first at least the first three chapters of Genesis, it's going to be difficult for you to understand any other part of the Bible. So, if you're to learn about the Bible, try to read uh, uh, Genesis, because it, it helps you, it tells you how to understand the Bible. And it also said, it's firmly a book that speaks about relationships, highlighting those between God and His creation, between God and humankind, and between human beings. So I told you uh, last week, it's about the all of our relationship. I mean, as a Christian religion, as a religion, and as a, as, as a world view, it focuses on the relationship. And that's why the shalom, uh, meaning the peace, uh, is key uh, and important. And uh, I think it's the same uh, with uh, uh, Islam. Uh, they, it, it focuses on their relationship. So that's, that's a key to uh, Judaism, Islam, Christianity. It has to do with how we live as a people together and uh, having the peaceful and harmony relationship. So that's all about it. I mean, so those those who are uh, saying they are Christian and are trying to destroy someone else's life or uh, community, that's that's not Christian. And I, I, I can tell you that. Uh, they're using uh, Christianity as their, their reason. I mean, uh, they are not being honest. And uh, so many things. Uh, happened by Christian, which is not really Christian, and uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry about that, but it, it does happen. Uh, it did happen in the history, and it is happening today, and it is going to happen. 
But true Christian uh, faith or religion uh, focuses on that harmonious relationship. Uh, no one is to kill another person for any reason, uh, unless he or she is attacked uh, by uh, that person. That's basically what the Bible teaches. So that's the Genesis. And the Genesis is a key book, and it talks about the flood. And uh, after the flood, it talks about the uh, Tower of uh, Babel. Uh, and we'll uh, talk about that later on. But uh, I'll just uh, try to give you a basic idea uh, what's in the, uh, the, the, what are the events that's recorded in the Genesis. Uh, we talked about, uh, in the last, last uh, quarter, we talked about the uh, characters of the people in, in the Old Testament. But uh, in this class, we are going to focus on the events, the episodes uh, about uh, that's, that's in the Old Testament. And the flood and the Tower of Babel is a key, one of the key events uh, that's in the Old Testament. So, pre uh, flood and post flood. The flood kind of marks uh, a very important uh, period or the, the, the marking stone. Because uh, there's a story before flood and after flood. And the earth, the ecology of uh, earth, the, the climate and uh, everything, the, the, the plants, animals, all these things changed after flood. And the, before the flood, as we know, there were uh, dinosaurs and all these uh, different kind of uh, plants, or which do not, does not exist anymore. Uh, and that uh, flood destroyed, and then they built after the flood. So uh, scientifically, scientifically speaking, even the flood marks a very different uh, thing uh, before and after. And the global warming that we are experiencing today might be some, something that's going to be close to the flood. Because the Bible says, uh, whether you, I mean, in the Old Testament uh, and the New Testament, both says that the final, uh, the judgment, uh, is the judgment of fire, uh, not the water. Judgment and fire may mean two different things. It may mean the uh, the nuclear war. Uh, I mean, everyone shooting <coughs> each other with a nuclear bomb, and then the fire, the the, the rain of fire uh, coming from the sky, then may mean those missiles, uh, you know, pouring out. And it may mean second thing, uh, which is a global warming. It's going to get warmer and warmer until human generation cannot uh, you know, tolerate uh, that heat. So, I mean, imagine uh, 150 degrees weather every day. Uh, if that happens, no human people can survive that uh, for long. So that kind of, that's kind of another uh, kind of picture uh, for the end of human generation. So the flood and this global warming can be compared. Uh, Exodus. Okay. Exodus is the story of uh, the Israelites coming out of Egypt. So that's a major event, and uh, it's written as a book. That's a whole book is contributed to that story of uh, Israel coming out of Egypt, which means, uh, I mean, Which means this book is uh, very important because uh, it, it has to do with the theme in the Bible. Salvation, freedom, and entering, coming out of uh, those, uh, slavery and to freedom. So same thing with our spiritual uh, life. 
we come out of uh, this bondage or the slavery to the sin and evil. And then you are coming out of that into the uh, land of uh, the promised land, which is the uh, heaven and the kingdom. So that image in the Exodus, it, it, it is coincide or it, it is compared uh, to Christian being free uh, from sin. And it's a salvation, the image of salvation, the topic and the theme of salvation is there in the story of Exodus. That's why this book is uh, very important in uh, Christian faith and uh, Islam and uh, also uh, Judaic uh, faith. So that story is uh, key. The book lays a foundational theology in which God reveals his name, his attributes, and his redemption. Redemption means uh, salvation. Okay? His law and how he, God, is to be worshipped. So this, uh, not only the Pentateuch, uh, the, those five books, not only tells about the history and the stories of the Jewish people, but it also includes the law. So Pentateuch has a history and the law integrated, combined together. So if you read those five books of the first five books of the Bible, you can understand about the history of only uh, Jewish people and then there is the law, and uh, some of the law has to do with how you are going to worship. And the main thing is, it lays a foundational theology. And uh, uh, re by reading the Exodus, uh, you know uh, who God is uh, more. Uh, but the God is, that is pictured in the book of Exodus is God who is strong, solid making judgment and a very strict because the law is a strict so uh, compared to the new testament god who is loving god and uh, uh, there's more grace and more mercy uh, pictured in the new testament but uh, sometimes the uh, god in the old testament is merciless uh, he's very strict and uh, he is god who is uh, angry and who makes a judgment and who even orders uh, uh, people to go out and kill women and children. So that's kind of a God that is pictured in the Old Testament. I, know, I mean, uh, in the Quran and the uh, uh, Jewish Bible also, they, they share the same uh, Old Testament God. That's why uh, the, the God is considered someone who is very powerful, like a tyrant king uh, who who even kills for his purpose. But that's not the all the picture in the uh, Old Testament. There is a God who is merciful, who is caring, who is very personal, and you know, trying to save uh, his people. So there are two different images of God in the Old Testament. And in Exodus, you see these uh, uh, images of God. and. Uh, uh, characters of God. So Exodus is a very important book to understand who God is. Then we come to another book.